Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. This is the place where we talk about all things sci-fi and fantasy, with a special emphasis on that most wonderful genre, steampunk. Today's topic is not exactly steampunk, but it's close. It's a genre-bending work that was a TV series back in 2002. It still has a devoid, devoted loyal following. It's a sci-fi western, <laughs> a nice genre-bending uh, mashup, and it's called Firefly by the brilliant Joss Whedon. Now, as I said, this is a genre-bending sci-fi western, and this was kind of at the height of jo uh, Whedon's popularity. Uh, he'd been doing uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, for example, and I actually learned about it a little bit later, because people were on online were talking about how great it was, and it had this huge fandom. It was on Fox, and and uh, for for whatever reason, the execs did not understand it, and they kept moving it around, and they didn't get very good ratings, and they ended up canceling it, which was a tragedy. I mean, it was kind of like Star Trek when the execs didn't appreciate either the the great popularity; they just didn't understand science fiction. So unfortunately, you know, it should have had more because it's, it's so good but it was doomed to the single season. I think part of the problem was it is the same problem that steampunk has, is it was neither fish nor fowl. I mean, it really didn't fit very well in any one genre. And the, fan, the fan, fandom is so fanatic that they people have organizations that endure to this day, devoted to this show and uh, the movie, and then there's been a lot of books. Uh, so one of the, and comics, but one of the reasons that I'm, I'm bringing this up is because we have a new line of novels out, novelizations, in this Firefly universe with the same kind of characters. Let me explain a little bit more about, about the premise of Firefly. The idea, I think it takes place in the 2500s. And the idea is that, you know, Earth became kind of used up. Kind of, I mean, whatever, with its climate, resources, whatever, overpopulation. And they call that the Earth that was. So they went out seeking colonize new worlds and they found this system or I think more like a, a, a series of inter interconnected or very close star systems and where they began colonizing and led by the Americans and the Chinese because they're the preeminent, preeminent powers and uh, so there's all these planets that are kind of nearby and we don't even have one interesting thing is there's, there's no mention of warp drive or anything like that. The idea is that that you don't really need to go fast past light speed to get from place to place. I mean, that's the impression I get. And they, a lot of these worlds are terraformed, so you know, as you really wouldn't expect. I mean, we've seen that a lot, of, a lot of star systems have planets in the livable zone from recent discoveries. But you wouldn't expect them to have more than one or two. But in this case, you know, the preview says there are dozens of planets and hundreds of moons, which they are, which they terraform, and so there's all these different places. So it's kind of got like a wild west atmosphere to it. Uh, a lot of the places are really frontier planets where where people are kind of just hanging on. The technology is really backwards, and it involves the crew of this uh, ship, which is a Firefly, which is a type of ship. The, the ship itself is called Serenity. And uh, the uh, captain is Malcolm Reynolds. He's a war veteran. And his fir as his fir mate, first mate, uh, uh, Zoe Elaine Washburn. And they fought together in the war against the Alliance. The Alliance being this uh, unifying force that wants everybody to be ruled by them. The, um, the brown coats were the rebels, and this is kind of analogous to the the Civil War of the U.S. But there's no slavery issue involved. It's just these guys just want to be independent, and uh, the uh, but they lose, <laughs> they lose, and they're and they're uh, forced to be, you know, part of the, this union. And so Reynolds is very embittered. I mean, and he gets this starship, and he's basically he's basically kind of a smuggler. Uh, he's, you know, transports goods, but he's kind of a smuggler, so he's always staying one step ahead of the law. And Zoe is this uh, 
she's this gorgeous woman. She's she's black. She's um, kind of an Amazon type warrior woman, <laughs> and uh, kind of quiet, kind of quiet. But she's his she's his right hand, and she's kind of she kind of helps ground him when he gets kind of flies off the when he when he's tempted to go off the rails. Let's say. So it's all these adventures in this kind of frontier type world, flying this ship that kind of looks like a firefly in its profile, which is why it's called the Firefly class. And what really makes Firefly, besides the setting, which again makes it steampunky, is the characters. The characters are wonderful and the actors, this cast of actors was fabulous. You'll never see it, it's like again. <laughs> and uh, so they had so all these characters that people just loved, and it's interesting because they're all like each of the characters is kind of like a stereotype, but they also have a, a, a wrinkle or a contradiction in their character, in their in their nature, which makes them all interesting. But lately, so anyway, after the show was canceled in, in 2002, and they had. The fans finally convinced Whedon to make a movie in 2005, and with Universal Pictures, and it it did well, but probably not as well as it should have because it, there was never any sequels. But uh, at the same time, there was a lot of fan hunger for this for this uh, universe. So there were um, comics from Dark Horse graphic novels and stuff from Dark Horse Comics from 2005 all the way through 2017, and I actually wasn't aware of these. I mean, I really didn't know about them until just recently when I started researching it because lately I stumbled in, you know, in Audible, I stumbled upon uh, a number of audiobooks that were written in the Firefly universe and, and published just recently uh, written by um, James Lovegrove uh, beginning with Big Damn Hero uh, published in 2018 which I have read pretty good, pretty good. It was, it was um, I wouldn't call it fantastic, but but definitely good, definitely worth worth checking out. The narrator is good as well, um, and so it was it was James Anderson Foster. So it was so it was a very very enjoyable to get to get back with those characters. And there was another another other books that have come out in this series: um, Magnificent Nine, Ghost Machine, Life Signs, and uh, some of them are coming out in the future. There's also a couple other authors, uh, Tom LeBon and Greg Pak, I understand, who've written books in the Firefly universe with, you know, Josh Whedon's blessing, which is pretty cool. I have to read some more of those. As far as the books, I as far as the book, I suppose I'd give uh, Big Dan Hero. I suppose I'd give it uh, like four gears, um, and I'll get more into that a little bit later after I've talked about the characters. Now. Uh, back in 2010, I actually joined a group of brown coats, which is what we call ourselves, the, the fans of, of the series. And it was a very interesting group of people from like ages from like 15 to 70. And we would meet in this used bookstore, which had a community room. And we would talk about Firefly and we would play games. And sometimes we would like invent a Firefly slant on stuff. Like the story Apples to Apples, I mean like the game Apples to Apples, there are cards. You can write your own questions and answers on them. Well, so, so of course we would add Firefly questions to them. And of course everybody got them all, because we all, we know all, knew it all. But one of the really interesting thing, things about it is it, like, it's got a frontier feel, so that's kind of steampunkish, but yet you've got the high tech of starships and so on, and blasters and whatnot. And you have a lot of 19th century sound in English. You know, especially Malcolm, especially Mal Reynolds, he talks in a very homespun fashion. And, and uh, yet, um, they have all these Chinese loan words, especially curses. They'll curse in, in Chinese, sometimes long complicated things like, may a, may a thousand dragons urinate on your head, or something like that. <laughs> and because this area was, was colonized, these plants were colonized, not just by the Americans, but also by the Chinese. And there are definitely Chinese worlds, and there are definitely Chinese actors in the um, in the scenes, but you don't see there's no there's no Asian characters on the the ship on the, on Serenity, which is I suppose kind of an oversight. I don't know. You would think you would think not. I'm not trying to be politically correct, but just 
saying that China has such a the Chinese people had such a big role in colonizing this area, you would think that there might be a character in there. So I'm going to go over the characters because that's what makes the show and, and, t and tell you all who, who don't know Firefly a little bit about them and why it makes it so special. First, of course, is Captain Mel Reynolds. He's kind of a homespun hunk, played by Nathan Fillion. He's better known for the series Castle, Common Cop series. He's actually from Canada. didn't know that until recently. And uh, he's a very cool guy, very good, very, very fun actor. His first mate, um, Zoe, uh, the lovely Amazon, played by Gina Torres. And uh, again, they are both veterans of the War of Independence against the Alliance. And Torres, I guess she's had some more series, but I, I haven't, you know, kept up. A lot of these actors have, you know, continued in different things, but I haven't followed many of them other than Fillion. And uh, so anyway, the reason they call the ship Serenity is because they were both uh, in the pivotal battle of Serenity Valley on one of these planets. And uh, that's why the ship is called that. That's why the movie is called Serenity, even though it's not a very serene movie. Um, the next character is Zoe's husband, who is Hoban Washburn, and he's the nerdy pilot of of the Firefly of of the Serenity, and he that's played by Alan Tudyk, and I've seen him in a couple other things. He's a kind of fun, kind of usually comic actor. He's this very great pilot, but he's he's very childlike. He has toy dinosaurs he's playing with all the time, and the, it seems the relationship between him and Zoe seems so improbable though, it's because she's such an alpha female and he's such a nerd. But you know that's why it's science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next we have Inara Sarah, and she's a companion, which means she's essentially a high, pl high class courtesan, played by the lovely, lovely Brazilian actress Morena Bacarin, and we saw her, I'm sure she's been in other things, but I remember her from the um, Deadpool movie, she's like Deadpool's girlfriend or wife or whatever she is, still looks good after all those years. And so she's an interesting character. She's very independent, but she's got an interesting occupation. She has her own shuttle, which uh, which allows her to travel around. But she's kind of she's a paying passenger. Kind of. And uh, there's a relationship between there's a tension between her and Malcolm. But he's always he doesn't like what she does for a living. He's always referring to like what did they teach you back in the horror academy? <laughs> so. Uh, so the next guy is uh, Jane Cobb, who's played by Adam Baldwin. Yes, a Baldwin. And uh, he's, uh, the character is a, a dumb, corrupt mercenary. He's uh, very good with guns, and he, he gives them names, and he, and he talks to them lovingly. And he's, although he's played as kind of a dummy, he's also smarter than he looks. And he's also very sentimental. I mean, he sends money home to his mom. She knits him this awful-looking orange cap. Uh, that uh, he wears because it's his mom made it for him. And if you see this ri ridiculous orange cap with, with uh, straps, chin straps on it, that's like a wool cap, at a sci-fi convention you know what that is. It's a James cap. So at times he's like, he, at times he almost betrays uh, Malcolm because um, there are um, there's a couple characters who are wanted fugitives and he can strongly almost turns them in for the bounty, <laughs> but he always seems to redeem himself. Moving on, we have Kaylee Fry, who is the charming girl mechanic, played by Jewel State. Uh, like a tall, tall blonde. She's uh, very, she's very sweet. She's very sweet. She's like uh, innocent. She's an extremely competent mechanic, gets her fingers dirty, but she also likes to dress in frilly dresses whenever possible. So that's, that's her contradiction. And uh, she's, she's, kind of, she's kind of the uh, soul of the ship, our soul of the group, as I think, I think Whedon has said that. She's also got a crush on one of the other characters, the Doctor character, who we'll get to shortly. <clears throat> Next, um, Shepard Dariel Brooke. He's a mysterious preacher with kind of a military or warrior past, very dark, perhaps criminal past. Played by Ron Glass of Barney Miller fame. Unfortunately, Ron Glass is deceased, no longer with us. Great actor. 
and he's he's kind of a he's kind of a moral compass, but at the same time we always we also wonder whether he has the right to to speak about that because he's obviously done horrible things in his life. Now we get to the last two are the fugitives that Jane was tempted to tempted to turn in. We have Simon Tam, and I don't know the name sounds Asian, but the actors are not Asian. Uh, he's a doctor, and uh, played by Sean Mar Mar Maher, I'm not sure. And River Tam, uh, she's the kind of psychotic genius girl, played by Summer Glau. Now, and who is like a nerd heartthrob? <laughs> She was on Big Bang Theory, the guest role, and all the guys are just drooling over her. Uh, but uh, the story is that she was a victim of uh, experimentation by this secret uh, alliance laboratory, and they did a horrible, unspeakable things to her. They made her a genius, but she's also crazy. And so her brother, the doctor, frees her, but now they're wanted criminals because they, you know he's taken her away, and that's one of the, some of the tension it always portrays. And uh, Simon is kind of a love interest. Simon and, uh, and uh, Kaylee have kind of a, an interest, a flirtation. But in the, in the show it never really blossoms. In the movie they took, um, they had some of the characters leave and some later got, came back and some even got killed, which is which was sad but also effective because, as Whedon said, if you kill off one of the major characters, then you don't know what's going to happen. The, the audience is completely at the edge of their seats, which was true. I was. I'm not going to tell you who, because I want you to see the movie. So, this again, again like I said, the, this, these series of books, they take place after the show, but before the movie. So, all the characters are still alive and, and with the crew at least for this first one. And it was not exceptional, but it was, was definitely enjoyable, at least four gears. The author has to introduce all the characters for the benefit of those readers who are not brown coats. <laughs> and so he has to take, tell a little bit of their backstory, and he dutifully gives everyone a significant role in the book, which is, considering I believe there's nine of them, that's, that's quite a task. i got to hand it to him. <laughs> and uh, of course, Malcolm is the, Malcolm is the biggest character, of course, and he is kidnapped by this shadowy organization who wants to try and execute him for something he did during the war. So I'm not going to get get into it more because I don't want to spoil it. But there's some interesting wrinkles in it. It's not entirely predictable, which is good. Anything that's not totally predictable is pretty good, especially as, as jaded as I have become. So, as I said, this, the um, show only had 12 episodes, and I'm going to just talk about Two of my favorites. One was called the train job, in which the crew of Firefly actually robs a train. <laughs> a, a train, it's like an old-fashioned western train <laughs> with a with a locomotive and stuff. And they, you know, fly down and cut a hole through something and they steal this valuable medicine on behalf of this crime lord and end up saying, well, maybe we ought to give it back because it was destined for some people who really needed it. But it kind of, so it was a good introduction to the uh, kind of the moral framework in which they live. The the other one I loved the most was called Out of Gas. In that case, Serenity was damaged. There was an explosion in the engines. And nobody's killed, but they're kind of stranded. And so um, Mal, because he's the captain, he stays on board and sends all the others away on shuttles. And, and he's going to try to call for help. He's kind of going to guard the ship. But as you know, the life system's shut down, he's like, he's like suffocating. And he's reliving all these stories of how he met all the people on the crew and how how they all fit in and how everyone came to be with Serenity and it's very it's very um, enlightening you learn a lot about the backstory which is why I love that and of course of course he gets rescued <laughs> because he's he is the captain it's funny there's so much there's so much love for Firefly that it's actually spawned, besides the group, there was a, there was a band, and I, I forgot to look up the names. These two guys call themselves the Bedlam Bards, and I have a CD by them where they sang songs only about Firefly. <laughs> well, and, and I don't know if that's, 
I don't know if that's the only shtick they do. I assume they probably do other sci-fi related stuff. I'll try to find a link to their, to them at, and post it here at some point just because I really enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun as a Firefly fan to, ha to have this, this Firefly related music. So, you, ha you, heard, you learned a lot about Firefly, and if you are a fan, you got to relive a little bit of that, about that, and hear about my, about my opinions of the, of the people, of the characters, and also the, uh, hear a little bit about the, the books that have come out, that are available, and they're available on Amazon and, and on Audible, so you can get the, the audiobook version, which is pretty cool. Check those out, definitely. Uh, for now... And this is the Steampunk Desperado saying thanks for hanging out with me and listening to my diatribes. And please like and subscribe because it helps us a lot. So, this is me, the Steampunk Desperado, saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.